wizard tower. It was quite the lofty goal I set out to accomplish and tackle as a project. I was even considering at one point as perhaps this to be the home for what many would consider to be the most legendary wizard of them all, Gandalf the Grey, if Gandalf were to have a place he called home. I knew at least before starting this that I wanted to do something that would be different anyway, something that I hadn't really seen done before in the world of model terrain, at least in the YouTube world. So I decided I'd place a tower upon a massive rock set on the shores of a raging sea and attempt a scene that might do justice to our wizard, whether that be Gandalf or some other man of mystery seeking his place of refuge far and away from the world outside. Now, we've created our monolith which our tower is to be placed upon and painted it, created a raging sea with a massive wave, there to swallow any adventurer whose misplaced step on the slippery rocks would send them to their certain watery grave. Now it's time to make a tower that'll hopefully do justice to all the work and energy we've put in this far. There's a lot at stake here and there's a really good chance I could just mess this whole thing up. After all that time, all that energy I put in, there's a chance I just could completely ruin it or I could just come up flat and things could just be very unimpressive. That is my biggest fear with this. So what are my options? Walk away, eliminating the risk of failure, or are we gonna tackle the unknown and take the risk we took when starting off with this project? I decided to take the risk I took when starting the project and venture deep into the unknown and at least give it my best effort. Will it be a success or is it going to be a disappointing end to a long, arduous journey? Let's go and find out. Hey everyone, welcome back again. This is Neil with Real Terrain Hobbies. So we are continuing our wizard tower build. We put a ton of energy and time into this. Now it's time to get at it and build this tower. All right guys, now before we get started uh, with that, I just want to give a quick thanks to this video's sponsor. Yes, I've got a sponsor. And uh, that is Amino Apps. Now they have just launched a new stories feature on their app. These are really short videos, high impact, high energy. I'm on there. I've already made my first video. Now to find me, just click on the search bar at the top, go to the users tab just below, type in real terrain hobbies and click on my profile. From there, just make sure you follow me, hit the follow button and the little bell. You'll be notified whenever I make a post. It's time for me to get with the times here. I'm not into Instagram stories or anything like that, but they seem to have a thriving community here. It looks intriguing to me and I can see myself posting here quite a bit. So head over there if it sounds intriguing to you and if you want to follow me and what I'm going to be doing there. All right, now getting on with the tower here. So I was really unsure when uh, planning this out what materials I it was exactly going to be using for this. I haven't done anything like this before. Didn't know if I was going to be using the styrofoam stone again or something completely different. I was really unsure about this. What I ended up doing was trying something a bit different and that is with clay, which you'll see in just a second, but I'm no sculptor. I don't know how to use clay. I have some tools, but I've never done much with them before. So this is probably not the wisest material to be using considering all the work put in so far and now we're just going to be trying out a new material. Not only did I have issues with what material I was going to be using but I really wanted a design that was going to be different from their standard uh, tower. Something to set it apart so for that I had seen somewhere else someone had done something like this where there was a stone kind of column supporting this massive structure above it offset from the main structure i really like that design it just gives off that fantasy vibe that you don't see in the real world it's just something that looks dangerous and crazy something that should never have been built nothing that completely defies the laws of physics but just something that you wouldn't normally see just because of the sheer danger behind the thing so now getting on with the build you can see that i used cardboard tubing 
wrapped in clay. Now, right away, you can see the first of the pitfalls that I encountered. This texture here, this rock, is not the nicest looking stone. Uh, I couldn't see it at first. This was the first attempt I had done. And the problem was that I did not use nearly enough pressure. Uh, I created a stone uh, texture roller, actually, that you can see in one of my earlier videos. I'll link it just above. So the, the key with this is applying this thing properly using the correct amount of pressure and I did not use that and I greatly regretted this later on as you'll see. So we're not off to a great start here on our epic wizard build, but to save us some time, I cheated a bit and went out and bought some WizKid doors. Now I do have a tutorial on how to create realistic, real, wooden door frames with metal hinges and parts you can go check that out uh, after this video but uh, for now i ended up going with the WizKid doors just to save me on some time whether it ended up saving any time or not that remains to be said i still had to paint these things up uh, so for paint normally you would have to prime your models if it was uh, plastic like this but these just happen to come pre-primed already so I'm using Vallejo colors, uh, Vallejo paints. You don't need to use Vallejo, but they are a good color. They're a little higher quality than your standard craft paints, which you don't want to be doing for modeling. So I just started off with a base coat of uh, tan, light brown for the uh, door, and then a gunmetal black for the hinges with the little studs um, top, kind of topped off with silver. And after that, you can see here, I'm applying a wash. This is the earth shade from Citadel, and it really makes things just pop and really come to life. It's amazing what a good wash can do. Uh, once I've done the wash, I do a light dry brush with white, go back again to a really heavy wash this time. And this is just really gonna bring out the details you can see already. Uh, finally, I'll just do a, a light dry brush again with the white, and that's it for the doors. It looks great, amazing, and that was super easy to do. And I think we get to count this as a small victory towards our build. I did, however, have a bit more of a difficult time painting up the stone pieces. Uh, I started off with the brown wash. As you can see, I was okay with that. I put a really heavy white on to kind of give it that, uh, I guess the rock, a, a white kind of worn look. I still wasn't quite happy with it. I put another wash on, wasn't quite happy with that. Then I went with a dark kind of dry brush with the black, messed around with it, and this is what we ended up with here. And you can see, this was my first prototype of the caretaker's house. This actually took a lot of time and work, and I ended up ditching the thing. I didn't like it. It just wasn't looking the way I wanted it to look. Uh, even though I made all those little stones, glued each and every one on individually, I still was not happy with it, ended up ditching that, and we're gonna go with a different shape coming up here, as you'll see, and this will be the caretaker's house. That will be a goblin, hunchback, somebody to greet you at the door before you get to see the fabled wizard of the realms. So here I am making the bridge. I went with styrofoam. I wasn't initially gonna go and try to do this with balsa wood. It just turned out to be a lot easier with styrofoam. Now for the cap of the stone column that's going to be supporting the tower, I just found this direct decorative wooden piece. I got this from Michaels, cut it in half with my chop saw, drilled it out with my drill press. Do not try to do that by hand and was able to fit uh, this piece of dowel in there. Um, that's a 3 8 inch thick or diameter dowel or 10 millimeters thick. Now for each of these shapes that I'm making, it's a simple process uh, for applying the stone onto here. Uh, what I do is I roll out my stone and actually this, once again, I did not use nearly enough pressure. Make sure you add enough pressure. Uh, I ended up having to put in more detail afterwards with my sculpting tools as you'll see here. This thing is sort of like a little finger, is how I heard it uh, described before, from a guy named Josh Foreman. He's actually an amazing artist. He does some amazing sculpture work. Go check his channel out, subscribe. 
He's a game developer by trade, and not only that, he's just released a book, a fantasy novel, and I am almost finished this thing. It is so well written, it's crazy, and the amount of art that he's stuffed into this thing is awesome. So I'd highly recommend you go check out, check him out and grab his book. You won't be disappointed. So getting back to our build. So again, what I was using is the DAS air dried clay. I don't know if I actually mentioned it at the start, but I'm just using these little finger tools to blend it all together. And for the pieces individually, all I'm doing is cutting them out, shaping them, applying some uh, PVA glue on the back and then gluing them into place. And then using my little finger tools afterwards, that's the best way to describe them. And you can just work it in. And that's kind of the hardest kind of not the hardest but the part I was most worried about when using clay is how are you going to bring it all together it's not it's intimidating but it's not as bad as you initially think it might be so that's again we have our column here roll out some clay for this one this is going to be more of some uh what's the word hewn stone I suppose so this stone is not uh, natural, it would have been carved by your local dwarves and uh, made into this crazy column pillar. Uh, so again, not too difficult. It looks intimidating, but it's not quite as bad as you might think. Hey guys, at this point, I just want to quickly mention that I've got a new Discord server up. I just got it going. Super excited about it. I uh, joined the community over there. You can post your pictures of your builds, uh, ask any questions you might have, talk to me vo via voice chat, uh, talk to each other via voice chat, text chat if you're not into the voice thing. Head over there. It's just the community of people that are like minded and share a passion for this hobby that we're all so crazy about. So now it's time that we moved on to the actual tower portion of this build itself. What I'm using for that is just your simple um, cardboard tube from your wrapping paper rolls. Uh, doesn't get any easier than that. Uh, so the same process is applied here. I'm gluing all the clay, the DAS clay on to the, to the uh, cardboard as well as to the uh, doors itself, the WizKid door. So it's as simple as before, simply rolling out your clay, applying it, and then blending it all together with your little uh, finger tools. And from now on, they're just, they're just going to be known as finger tools. If uh, you know the right name for those, let me know down in the comments below. You can help me at least sound like I know what I'm talking about. So now that I've got the, this part of the tower up on the actual structure itself over top of the column on the bridge, things are really starting to come together now. This is starting to look like an actual wizard tower, at least the general shape of things. So there's still a long ways to go. There's still a lot that could go wrong, but we're getting somewhere and things are starting to look up a bit. So for this tower section, I wanted a little bit of extra character. I just didn't want this thing going straight up. So that's what I ended up doing is um, put, making this a little bit dilapidated, like it could fall over, like it's breaking. Maybe it's just the wizard's magic that's barely holding this thing together. And, uh, or it so started breaking, and but they kind of fixed it and started building on top of that after it started falling over, continued on. I don't know, it's got a bit of a story behind it. Let me know if you think you like it or not, or if it's just a little too crooked. Um, but I thought I'd added some character anyway, and I was quite happy with it. To glue these sections together, I'm using, again, a construction adhesive called PL Premium. This stuff is incredible. It does take 24 hours to set those, so that does take a little bit of time, but this is never gonna be coming apart. Now, just to quickly mention all the parts, all of the materials and everything that I'm using in this build are going to be listed below onto my Amazon affiliate links. Click those to get anything that you need from this. And by doing that, if you like these videos and what I'm trying to do here, that is going to go a long way in helping me grow this thing and get more and more content out to you guys. 
Another great way you can fund these videos and help support me and build up this channel is to support me over on Patreon. That support goes a long way and it really means a lot to me when people join and that they are showing that they actually believe in what I'm doing here. They appreciate these videos and they want to see more of these in the future. So if that is you and you like what I'm doing here, consider going over to Patreon, signing up and becoming a member of the Real Terrain Hobbies family. Okay, so it's time to get back to the caretaker's house. Uh, before I had sort of a square boxy kind of look, I decided uh, what seemed to go better and fit with everything was to keep things nice and round uh, the same way that the main structure of the tower itself is uh, done. So for that, I'm using the same three inch cardboard tubing. I actually got this from a battle mat that I had purchased online. But you can find the exact same stuff in the links below in the Amazon uh, link down there. It'll take you right to this. For the other side, I'm using the cardboard tube from the PL Premium Glue. If you don't happen to have that, just go and use some more um, cardboard tubing from your wrapping paper. You can cut it in half and spread it open a bit and that'll just give you a bit more diameter to work with. Now here is the proper technique to use when making this stone. I get way more detail out of it. It looks much better than it did at the start. So I'm really happy with this. All you have to do is make sure you apply that correct amount of pressure on there and just this looks much better, much more realistic and I'm really happy with the results. Now a quick note, you'll see that I used a different glue to glue this cardboard in place and this is actually a two-part epoxy. It dries really fast, five minute drying time. That's what I really loved about this stuff. Uh, so if you need something with fast drying time, I highly recommend using a two-part epoxy. There are um, hot glue guns as well that you can use. I've never been a big fan of the hot glue gun uh, just because I've had as a as a kid using this stuff i remember making this christmas wreath i was amazing i put so much effort there was all these different pine cones and nuts and acorns and things and bows and christmas stuff all over it i was so proud of this thing and then the next year took it out of the bag took it out of storage and the whole thing had like completely fallen apart the hot glue gun did not do its job and ever since then I seem to have this bad taste in my mouth for hot glue. So let me know uh, in the comments if you feel this way or if you actually really like the hot glue gun. I know there are a lot of channels that use it as their go-to and uh, so if that's you let me know and long term does it hold up or do things start to kind of fall apart after a while. Let me know what you think below and maybe I'll go back to the hot glue gun again and give it another try. All right, so far there's a few things that have not been going well with the build. One was that the texture that I initially rolled onto the, uh, the center structure was really weak. I had to try to carve out some extra detail into the stone. That was a bit of a disappointment. Um, the next thing here is that this whole setup that I'm doing now, just to do a bit of foreshadowing, the pieces here that I'm putting on did not work out very well. This part here, I wasn't paying attention at all and things ended up getting really warped and lopsided. I don't even realize till later on. I did all this work putting all these little pieces on. Uh, carving in the detail here and things just did not turn out so this was a bit of a downer and yeah not good so now to redeem things or at least attempt to i'm going to be trying out the interior of the structure so i did decided to have a cutaway as you saw right from the beginning to open this thing up to be able to see inside so for that, I'm making some floors here uh, that the, uh, and I guess floors slash ceilings, depending what level you're on. These are the cross beams. It's going to be a wooden or they're going to be wooden floors. So I really wanted to try to make this work to make it really look kind of neat and interesting inside. Uh, so this is what I ended up using with. I got balsa wood here. Uh, this is 3 16 uh, thickness for the planks and then these pieces here are I want to say quarter inch balsa. Let me double check on that. 
Yes, that's right. So what I ended up doing was just drawing out this template. I traced the cardboard tubing you saw earlier. Now I am just trimming around all the boards uh, just to make it an inner circle or a circle so it'll be able to fit inside of the tubing as our levels. Making an opening as you can see there for some steps for what I had planned but later you'll see once again that didn't really turn out and I ended up having to improvise a little bit so I'll show you exactly what happened with that. So we made three of these, they fit in there great. And what I'm using to paint these is burnt umber paint, really watered down. Um, I'd actually recommend for wood and for weathering to use enamel paints. Uh, they, that's what the kind of the pro modelers do. The scale model guys is they use the enamel paints and I ended up using that later on for some other wood sections you'll see coming up in just a little bit. So you can see the tower is starting to come together. It's shaping up regardless of the stone uh, texture that didn't turn out as well and as detailed as I had hoped. Things are getting better. Uh, I did scratch some better detail into the dry um, uh, clay, which is another great thing with this DAS clay. It is very carvable after the fact. You can go in there and get that extra detail in if you need it. Um, so what I'm doing now is just gluing this and fastening it into place. There's no turning back from here. This thing is not coming out. Uh, so if I have any regrets later on, well, it's going to be ugly. I use PL Premium to glue it in place. And now it's just a matter of blending everything into the rocks. I'm adding more plaster of Paris, more plaster rocks. If you haven't seen how I've done the rocks, I've got a full video on how to make this stone structure and the forms and the molds and everything I used for that. So I'm just using those exact same molds again, exact same plaster of Paris. It's starting to look good. It's coming together. It's taking shape. Um, I'm pretty happy with how things are going, but there's still a lot to come. I got to paint this entire thing yet. And man, that can really make or break this entire model, uh, all this, the work that we put into this part. Uh, we gotta figure out a way to get that really realistic. But for now, we are far from out of the woods yet and there's still much to come that can make or break this thing. So an important step when blending all this clay together is to re-wet the old stuff, the sections that you want the new clay to bond to, that uh, really makes things kind of soak together and bond really nice and firmly become one kind of solid piece once things have dried. Then after that, I just go in with my little finger tool once again, and I carve out and put in the detail of each of the rocks. And it really is as, as simple as that, not too difficult, and it bling, brings things together quite nicely. So yes, here we are. As I'd mentioned earlier, uh, I was not paying attention at all while I made this section here and it, it just does not look good. Um, it's supposed to be level here. The table is actually level and this thing was warped all the little blocks the squares on the top were all lopsided squished it just it looked terrible i don't know what i was thinking so i'm going here i'm cutting everything off again starting from scratch using this hacksaw and my uh, vacuum to get all this done sanding it down flat and I'm starting over again it is a bit of a setback it was not not cool it looked it looked awful i don't know why i just didn't really notice it but Luckily, this stuff, this clay, you can carve into it afterwards. You can dry carve this and put detail in there and it looks fantastic. So not all is lost. We can bring this thing back again. It's just a setback having to do things twice, but moving on. So here we are on with the paint. This is probably one of the most intimidating parts of this entire build. If there's any potential to really mess this build up, it's with the paint. If you go too strong on this, you are really going to, I mean, you can paint over again, but the, this clay is very porous, so it soaks in um, the paint really well. So that's really works to your advantage. But if you put too much of this paint on and you have to start over again, you lose that, that 
porosity. I don't know if that's the actual word, but you, you lose that ability for this really to absorb paint and then you're just painting on top of paint and it really hurts things for you down the road. So I made sure to take things really slow with this. And um, so I started off with a few really, really diluted washes. And then here I'm actually adding in some pigments, some powdered pigment. And this really, I really like the looks of these pigments. They take away a shine and they kind of, they, they add a really nice dull matte finish to everything that makes it look really realistic. Um, kind of a really nice dirty look to it. So after that, I get a bit of a, a darker black wash, make this a little heavier. And these really work well for say water streaks where you get lots of water coming and staining the rock. I use these in various places to show it dripping down. And uh, in the end, what I ended up doing basically was doing a, a nice light uh, gray wash uh, topped off on top of that here and there I had splotch on some um, some yellowish brown as you can see the yellow tinges in there I dabbed that on with a sponge after that I applied a darker wash or sort of the black to fill in all the nooks and crannies and then here we, we top it all off with a dry, dry brush a white again and that really really brings it all together and I was quite satisfied with the results of the paint so now this tower, this is a very long piece on our model. I did not want to fasten this on permanently because what's going to happen, you have to move this around and snap off it comes. So I decided to use a magnet. I got a really strong earth magnet here. I think this one is about 15 to 20 pounds, very heavy or very strong magnet. That's why I'm putting this piece of wood in here as a little buffer and then applying my glue on top of that. So that's what I did for the uh, tower side. Now I'm going to be doing the same thing on the uh, main structure here. So what I'm doing is drilling out the side so I'll be able to slide in the main uh, from the side. A very important thing you want to do is make sure that yeah, your polarity is uh, attracting and pulling towards each other. If you accidentally put the polarity opposite, it's just going to push away and it'll never go on. <laughs> you are... You're gonna have to tear things apart and get that magnet out somehow. So I just made that little opening, use the stick as a depth gauge to get it right center in the middle. And it's as simple as that. Threw some glue on there, some PL Premium, and this is perfect. It's not going anywhere. That thickness, because these magnets are so strong, that 1 8 thickness in there is a perfect buffer. And this is, so it for sure is about 15 pounds each magnet. So this is the perfect bonding as you'll see testing this out and it worked great so from there we're going on with some more clay i want to add some little details some feature pieces in here and there so that's all i'm doing here you can see the clay you put it on cut some off if you need to use your little finger tools and it's as simple as that next i'm adding some balls on the top these things obviously if you don't have a little stick in between them to fasten it on they're just going to be snapping off the second uh, you accidentally bump into the thing so that's why i use a little toothpick in there on both ends and he created this nice little feature beside either side of the door and there you go all right so we are getting closer and closer to the end of this thing now we're moving on to the roof. So what I needed to do, the way I wanted to build these roofs, I soon realized I needed to, to build myself sort of a template, something, I guess this would be more, I guess a jig you would call this, something to set up the structure um, for these roofs. You see they're gonna be octagonal, so that's eight sided. So right now we've got four sides and I have to figure out how to cut the other four on this thing. So I started off with this pyramid, figured out exactly what my distances were going to be to get to either end, and then we cut those down with a razor blade. So you can see once I figured out exactly where I needed to make the cuts, I marked it onto my mat and then just eyeballed from behind how my blade was going down. I couldn't figure this out, how to do it on the table saw, uh, it was just too much figuring out, too much time, so I ended up just doing some eyeballing. And then here I'm gonna be resting each of my sticks on each corner.
corner. That's why I shaved the point off and now I'll have each end resting perfectly still on there. So once those are all together, I'm gonna to cut the top off because this is where I'm gonna be applying my glue. All I did here, I probably could have done something a little better than this, but I put that little round dowel in the middle there just to act as a filler. Mixed up some epoxy, some quick drying epoxy. The stuff dries again, five minutes. Applied that and the thing was ready to go shortly afterwards. From there, I just cut the back end that's gonna be tucked away into the other side of the tower. And from there, we cut out the panels using once again, the 3 16 uh, balsa sheets. And all I do for those, glue them in and it's easy as that. Just be sure to have a bit of your square dowel pieces sticking out at the end just for some added character. Yes, so on to the shingles. So for shingles, I ended up using something a little different than I have in the past. In the past, I've used balsa 3 16 This time, I'm going with a veneer, and this stuff is oak, and it's got way more character in it. It's a lot thinner, so therefore, it's much more realistic. There is glue on the back. It's the dry glue on the one side. So what they would normally do is apply this to whatever MDF, some particle board, and then heat it with a heat gun. And that glue just melts and puts the whole thing into place. But first, what I do is I cut each of them into my perfect tiny little uh, rectangles, glue them all in place. And from there, um, once, once I start the painting, actually, I paint these next. And then I use just a, a hot air blower, a hair dryer, <laughs> to, um, to dry the paint. But it ended up melting all that glue away so you can see any of it from the other side. And it makes the perfect bond and it worked great, just perfectly. Lower roof, and I forgot to mention earlier, but these square pieces of square dowel are actually five millimeters uh, thick or three eighths thick. Once again, we want things to really sort of pop out and jump out at us. So all I'm doing here now is adding in some extra decorative spots with the, uh, with the dash clay. And these little extra things really just sort of make everything come together, pop out, adding these features. Go crazy with these. I would do even more if I could. Um, but yeah, they just sort of finish off that bridge really nicely. So now I want this, the face piece that is coming off to show the interior, I want that to be able to clip on and off. So for that, what I'm using is these clay or these magnets. Uh, this, these, as you saw on the packages, are from K&J Mag Magnets. I'll leave a link in the description uh, as to where I got them from. And I would actually go stronger than what these were labeled as. Um, I found that they were pretty weak and I ended up having to go with a bigger magnet on this section here, the piece that actually snaps off. So what I ended up doing, I put my clay onto it at the back here, pushed it on to see exactly where my magnets were gonna be uh, needed to be applied to this outer piece. And then once it was dry, I drilled that out and put the magnet in place and you'll see that just in the future. So now it's painting the roofs. So these are the enamel paints or the oil-based paints that I recommend doing for weathering of any wood. I got this tip from some scale modelers from my local hobby shop. They gave me these paints. And the nice thing about them is that they don't just sort of, uh, when you paint it on, it's not just one sort of flat color. If you apply more into one area, less in the other, you get more uh, variation in the different tones. You can get a darker and a lighter tones with these much easier than you can with the acrylic paints. So the brand I'm using for these paints is called Testers and I first applied the dark brown matte on. That's what the initial brown color was. And then on top of that, I applied black. And you need to use an actual paint thinner for these to thin them out. You cannot use water. They're not water soluble. Uh, like I said, they're oil-based. 
And then from there, after having applied that and I was happy with how they looked, I then put the white dry brush on to really finish things off. Next, it's making the final roof at the very top of the tower. For that, I made this little thing here. Uh, what I did was just use some cloth and then some fabric hardener and I kind of got a little bit of a misshape out of this thing. I was going to use some clay shingles at the beginning as you can see, didn't like those, cut them off and now I'm just using this as a jig for all these pieces. So I plied my pieces, you can see that I broke them to give them some extra shape and then right at the top here I glued them all together securing an elastic band around the top using some more pins and it really just held everything in place and then from there we can put our wood panels on again and once again these are the 3 16 thick balsa sheets that i'm using for these panels you can see i had one on the top and one underneath to get the two varying slopes and uh, it just added a lot more character to the overall shape of the very top uh, rooftop We're getting close to the end here. These are the final stages and we're finally moving on to all the vegetation, the tufts, the flocking and the static grass. I think this has to be my most favorite part of any build. This is when everything finally comes together and really starts to look really good. So what I'm using for my various materials in this, I'm using um, some flocking from Woodland Scenics. Again, down in the links just below here in the description, you can uh, pick it up on Amazon. And also a whole whack of various uh, different grass tufts. Now, uh, the guys that I got these from, they were an online kind of uh, eBay company. I don't think they are, are around anymore, but there are so many different places that you can get grass tufts from. Um, just uh, look it up online, Woodland Scenics and various other places. I'll put some more links in the description for you. But um, yeah, so what I did on these roofs, I wanted a bit of moss on them. Not, not too much, not to make it look like these are like right in the jungle, but just sort of on the same side here. This could be the north side of the building with all the moss on. Uh, so that's what I ended up doing there, just to blend things together, adding some more tufts, putting a little bits here and there, and it just, like I said, brings everything together and looks incredible. So now it's back to water again. I thought we were done with that. Well, no, I did say that there were more finishing touches to do. I'm not quite, I wasn't very happy with how things ended up. Uh, I did get a comment that things look more like ice than they did water, and I agreed with that. So what I did was add snow to my Liquitex gel. Last time I added the snow to the resin itself. This time I added to the Liquitex gel. I dabbed that in here and there, then using a different um, tool to apply uh, more of it. I added in the Liquitex without any snow in the area just to blend things in and it looks really well or look really good and on top of that I'm extending this way though. It just did not look good. It needed some more mass, some more bulk on the one side. 
So again, I poured out some resin, let it sit for a maximum of three to four hours. That way you still have nice flexibility with the resin and I was able to shape it into the wave. Now I'm just creating the dam uh, that I'll be using to pour some more resin in and this just sort of blew this wave section down that I'm adding in. And from there, we'll add even in, uh, add even more resin onto things. So you can see this looks a lot better now. It looks more proportional and there's a proper amount of mass of water coming in and crashing and creating that big giant splash. It just didn't look right before without this section being there. So now what I did to really bring everything together and to make it not look ice again, you can see the uh, end result here. I didn't get it filmed, but I just added an extra layer on top of everything of resin that I had before. And it just gives it so much more depth now. The, you can see the turbulence underneath the surface and it properly looks like water. Before, like they said, or like I'd said before, someone had commented that it looked a lot like ice and yeah it did just didn't look right so after adding that uh, I then stippled on the Liquitex gel again to create all the turbulent waves here I'm adding in the snow with the Liquitex to uh, kind of extend the wave and blend this section into the big uh, beefy area and you can see here much improvement things look way better in my opinion and I'm really really quite happy with how all this water turned out and I'm very satisfied with this. All right, so we're back to the magnets again. As you can see, I got these from K&J Magnets uh, out of the US. Uh, they're not sponsored or anything. This is just a good, handy, cheap place to get magnets. So as I said earlier, the magnets that I had put into the wood uh, frame itself on the wizard tower were not very strong. So I needed something a lot stronger on this portion here. So I put these two big guys in and they were enough to properly snap on and hold this section in place. Now it's time to redo those battlements that I had snapped off earlier. Those are just sort of little blobs and they looked really bad. This time I figured I'd try something a little different so I cut out these long rectangular pieces and decided I'd try to let these dry and then cut the squares out and actually I found this to be a much better method. Uh, than using the wet squares that I had done earlier. All right, so you can see things are much more uniform and square. They don't just look like little blobs of clay. Uh, things look a lot better now. So I decided to use toothpicks again to fasten these just like I did the other little balls, but already things are way better than they were. And for paint, all I'm doing is a black wash and they turn out into a nice gray. They're a little dark here, but they dry much lighter than this and blend in perfectly with the rest of the stone. Okay, we are coming to the end here. There are four things to complete. One is the dock or the bridge to the shore. So four things to mess up and possibly maybe not bring this to a terrible crashing disastrous end but still stuff that could go wrong and sort of uh, not really mesh well with everything that we've done to this point. So what I did here is actually use that uh, veneer again, the oak veneer. I glued two pieces together. That's what you saw over the flame. Be very careful about that because this is wood. It could start on fire. So don't get it too close to that flame or use some hot air of some kind and then it just glued melted the two sides that had glue on them together to make this a double-sided veneer and then I just cut them into these pieces here that you can see to make the dock and I'm putting these into place somewhat haphazardly this is the entrance to our wizard tower it's we're kind of setting the scene with this you want it to be a little bit dilapidated sort of haphazardly put together just kind of like your typical wizard he's deep into his knowledge but then his surroundings just kind of fall apart and crumble a little bit that's the look i wanted then to top it off i just used a spray adhesive to get that gloss wet look all right so with our bridge complete and looking fairly good it's time to move on and finish off our tower the very top 
So with this again, I'm using balsa as well as the sheets of veneer, which I'm using to create these side panels. There's nothing much to them. Make sure they're double-sided again using the same method that I use for the bridge and then just paint them up. And for the windows, I'm just using a resin tinted with orange to give it kind of a glowing uh, look, just like uh, Black Magic Craft does for his windows. Uh, if you haven't seen any of his videos, I suggest you go check them out and subscribe. So I think these turned out pretty well. This isn't the fanciest looking tower. Um, I was somewhat unsure of whether I really like this look or not, but it ended up looking pretty good and I was I was happy with it in the end, so I left it as that. Now I'm adding this tree in just to sort of bring everything together. These are from uh, a, a little bush that we have out here called sagebrush and they make the perfect little tree really nice and easy i just spray with my spray adhesive and then put on your leafy branches these are a woodland scenics product they come in a little package and i'm going to have that link to buy these down in, for it to amazon just below in the description with all other materials from this this project that you can get again go down and click those links and it's going to give me a little bit of a kickback to help me in the channel and uh, get you what you need as well Next up is making the ivy, which is going to add a ton of character to this thing and really finish it off really nicely. I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but I do have a full tutorial on exactly how to make these guys, which I'll link just above. All right, so the very final step in this entire project is putting in our trap door so our wizard can get to the top. A very simple process. I just drilled out a hole and then cut some pieces of balsa, made a little latch and a trap door. You can see how I made the metal handles for it in my um, how to make uh, swinging doors tutorial just up in the link above, go check that out. And that's it, paint this thing up. I added a little bit of extra plaster onto the uh, front door as you'll see here. And that is it. This is the final thing where you have completed the project. And this is our very final step. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is our wizard tower. It was a long journey. It took a long time to get here. This is what we've got. Was it worth it? Well, you be the judge. ways to get to this point I don't know everything I'm still learning there's still a lot of room for mistakes but you just keep persevering keep at it make those mistakes learn again hopefully improve a little bit and look what you can make look what you can build I never made anything like this before this was a brand new thing a new just a total shot in the dark to make this look good and I think we did all right so